Uh, okay, Bob. So we're looking right now. Uh, I know, I know in our conversations, no one ever really has any issues with thermal spraying. It's obviously, it, it's a foolproof process, but well, let's talk a little more about cracks. Uh, tell me what cracks are and you can, and let's elaborate a little bit more on, on what, what's going on there. Well, well, sure, Justin. And you're, you're exactly spot on. This one, we purposely, this picture, we purposely caused this problem. This wouldn't have been a customer calling in with an issue of having cracks. So we'll leave it at that. Right. So um, reality is we did get that call and we look at this picture and at first they're saying, well, is there a problem with our powder? And there's actually, you can be a detective on this one because there's some clues here. The first clue is you see that bluish color? Yeah, that bluish color. And there's a goldish tint to a straw color on the other side. I have another slide here. Can you go to that one? And we might come back to this one. Go to that next slide. There's something called gun bluing that a lot of people are probably familiar with. And in the old days, before they had fancy chemicals to do bluing of steel, they used to do bluing of gun barrels to prevent corrosion of the barrel. And the way they did that is they heated it up to about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And you see this chart here. This chart shows what tint steel gets when you heat it up to a certain temperature. So on the very bottom, you see that 410 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a strawish color. Then you go up higher, and then you'll see up there, you get that dark blue at about 550 degrees Fahrenheit. That's our first clue. We know what temperature this part saw. Okay, now you see there, the center part where the main thermal spray was put on is blue. That's the hottest. And if you go to the left, you can see it gets down to the shades of gray and gold. So that's our second clue that this thing was pretty hot and the temperature naturally dropped off. Same thing to the right. You can see it's a lighter color. So that's our first hint that this thing really got hot. Now, when it gets too hot, what happens is that material is actually larger in diameter. It's kind of like if you've ever seen a compression fit for a ring. Uh, this is an industrial thing where they want to put a sleeve on something and they have a part, they have a, uh, a uh, sleeve that's slightly smaller diameter than the shaft they want to put it on. So they heat, heat the sleeve up and expands. Metal expands when it heats up. So what happens is it expands to a larger diameter. They slide it over the shaft and then it shrinks and it fits. So this is exactly what happened here. This got too hot. The thermal spray coating was too hot, and when it shrank, as it was cooling, it cracked. So you see those axial-oriented cracks. This is a common problem. And the common reason for this is if an operator moves too slow with the torch and tries to put too much coating on per pass, he gets a thick coating and ends up um, uh, being very hot. Now, another clue is he was probably putting on too thick is on the left-hand side of the picture, you can see where that's spalling and how thick that looks. It got so thick, it was spalling. And, and I'm actually, might he might have put it on all in one pass. And if he did that, that was extremely hot, which in this case, again, was up over 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we see this kind of thing with the discoloration from the heat, we see the axial cracks. It's pretty clear that this was too hot, and it was just a matter of this thing shrinking, and it cracked to relieve the stress. That's the other key to all this stuff with cracking. When you see cracks, there's a crack there because it relieves stress. That, that's what happens. There's too much stress in the surface. So even like a, um, a window, when you smash a window and how it, all those cracks, well, windows are so brittle, you hit it with that high stress with whatever you hit it with, a baseball bat or, you know, a BB or whatever you hit, and it gets all those cracks and it just shatters. It's relieving the stress, the extra stress you put into that surface. That's one style crack that we see pretty often. And now we have another one here. This is a little hard to see because what, what this was is this is a cracked piston and they use Zyglo penetrant to look for cracks. Now, the problem with Zyglo is after you leave it sit a while, it weeps out. Uh, and that's what all these white colors look like. So, what happens is if you want to use Zyglo inspection to look for cracks, there is this, this um, fluid you put on there that's a penetrating fluid, and it seeps into cracks very easily. And then you wipe it all off, and it starts seeping out, and you put what's called a developer on top. That's what the white thing is. And as that, as that dye starts weeping out, it 
this colors the developer they just sprayed on top. I don't know if that made a whole lot of sense. It might be a little confusing, but no, it, I, it, I'm, I'm listening and looking at this. This actually looks pretty cool. Like I yeah. actually like the way this looks. <laughs> so we have this cracking from this carbide coating and um, well, the carbide coatings are very hard. And uh, so you can get them to crack relatively easily because they're not very ductile because they're so hard. So in this case, what we have here, a Zyglo inspection was done on this part. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the picture right after Zyglo inspection. So let me explain how Zyglo works so you know where we had this kind of odd odd picture here. Um, with Zyglo, we put a liquid penetrant on that is uh, a very thin, um, often a solvent-based um, liquid that penetrates into tight cracks. And once you put it on there, it sucks into those cracks. And then we wipe that off so it's clean. Now, once you wipe it off, it'll start weeping out slowly. So what we do is we spray a, a powder on there called a developer. And the developer shows where this fluid is leaking out of these cracks. And it shows up really clearly. So it's kind of like talcum powder. Uh, as that kind of consistency, it's very dry, but it absorbs these liquids so you can see this. So in this case, this picture was taken probably an hour after Zyglo inspection, maybe a little bit longer. And you still see the spiderweb pattern but the cracks aren't as wide as what those dark bands are. The cracks are very, very small and narrow. So this is one way of doing it. Now, if you go to the next picture, that's what these tight cracks look like. This is the better representation. So you can picture that these little cracks have all these little crevices in there. When you put that penetrating fluid on, it soaks into there, wipe it off, you put that type, the, the developer on it, and then that fluid slowly leaks out, and you'll see that spiderweb uh, pattern. So again, this is the case, it's kind of like if you had a big plate glass and you hit it with a hammer, it's going to get rid of that stress by cracks developing. And when the crack develop, it, it absorbs that stress. So it's a common problem with the carbide coatings, where if you get it too hot again, whether it's because the coating was put on too thick, the part you're spraying is too thin, uh, for some reason, you couldn't dissipate the heat away from that coating fast enough. And that heat was stored in there, and it got to a temperature when it did cool down, it shrank, just like the other coating we saw, the other picture we saw earlier. And in this case, we get the spiderweb cracks instead of big axial cracks. Okay, so we looked at these spiderweb cracks. We had uh, one case of the spiderweb cracks and the other one with the axial cracks. This is another case of a spiderweb crack that's actually spalling off. So we got a double whammy here. Now, in this particular case, I believe the cause of it spalling was when it was relieving the stress, the surface didn't have a rough enough finish. So we had two things going on here that were bad is we didn't have a, a rough enough surface profile. So the bonding wasn't very good of the carbide to the substrate, to the part we we're spraying. And then we had the cracks occurring that were the spiderweb cracks. And as you can imagine, even again, you think about a window, when you hit a window with enough stress, like, Car windows have that plastic layer in there that keeps them from, like, blowing in. Uh, but if you hit it hard enough, it will blow in, um, and it'll shatter and make a mess. So in this case here, as that stressor is relieving on those cracks, the spiderweb cracks, also it relieved the stress by delaminating. So those two together all acted together, and here we have the spiderweb cracks, cracks, <laughs> cracks, cracks. Here we have the spiderweb cracks along with the spalling. So, Justin, after this discussion, you're convinced all cracks are bad, right? Yeah, I mean, it would seem, yeah, that, I think that's the case. Yeah, that's my trap questioning. I did that to you last time, too. Here's, here's a case where these are cracks, but these are good cracks. So this is a thermal barrier coating used in aerospace, and it's sprayed intentionally to get these vertically aligned cracks. And the coating... Uh, the coating is, is designed to be used for thermal barrier. It's trying to keep heat away from the base material. So the coating is that YSC, you see that there? That's a yttrium stabilized zirconia ceramic coating. And there's a bond coat. That's what that BC is. You see that little dark layer? And then you have the substrate. That would be like a turbine blade that you're coating. 
So the first thing you do is you put a bond material on that creates a good bond to the base material and also is good for bonding the ceramic to it. Now, what these vertical cracks do in operation is, you can imagine a gas turbine, a jet engine, has these blades that all of a sudden you're firing fuel in there and you're getting temperatures that might be certainly over 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very hot for metals to, to stand up to. Uh, but with the ceramic coating on there, the ceramic doesn't allow the heat to transfer so readily into the part. It actually is a barrier, so it reduces the temperature on the part. Now, the problem with it is you can imagine ceramic, just like your china and all that, they're, it's brittle. So what can happen is, again, you got the temperature problem. If you heat up and cool down too fast, your coating can crack. Well, we even, if you intentionally crack it, it allows the stresses to expand and contract in service. So in this case, as this part heats up, those cracks actually close up because it's expanding. So in service, the cracks close up and you're protecting the part and you're keeping the heat away from the base material. Then when it cools down, those cracks open up again. So it's a useful crack. It's actually pretty brilliant. Some people designed this so probably 30 years ago, I think they started playing around with actually intentionally cracking it in this vertical plane. Now, if the cracks occur uh, in horizontal plane, that's a bad crack in the ceramic coating. That'll spall off. But in this case, it allows for the stress relief. So this is, is an example of some good cracks, which just goes to show you that uh, with the right proper engineering and design of parameters and design of process, you can create coatings in a variety of ways that in one case, it's a bad coating. In another case, it's a great coating. So it all comes down to that engineering and really thinking it through. So here at Thermal Spray Depot, what we can do is we can help point you in the right direction. If you want cracks, we'll give you cracks. If you don't want cracks, we'll figure out how not to give you cracks. Uh, did you have... <laughs> that's very good. That's, uh, that's, that's, you sold me. Okay. Very good. It sounds good.